from Tech for Text. Today we're going to be looking at this Seagate Fire Cuda 520. What makes this special? It's basically PCI Express Gen 4. So that means it's the fastest ones you can basically get. So that generally works on your third gen Ryzen as well as Threadripper CPUs and hopefully Intel will actually incorporate that in their boards in the future. Okay as we said we're looking at this Seagate 1 terabyte Fire Cuda 520 which is an N.2 PCI XP Gen 4 times 4 NVMe SSD. So basically, it's a really fast SSD. The max read speed on these is roughly 5,000 megabytes per second. So that's a lot faster than on NVMe Free, which is generally around about 3,500 megabytes per second. And the write speed on this is actually quite fast as well. That is 4,400 megabytes per second so it's got a hell of a lot of performance in there and if you are upgrading for any reason from a traditional hard drive you're gonna see one hell of a difference. The SSD itself is an M.2, it's 2280 double sided, that's the form factor and it comes in a 2 terabyte, a 1 terabyte, and a 500 gigabyte version, and they all come with a 5 year warranty. This version here, which is a 1 terabyte, has a recommended retail price in the UK for close to £225. But if you have a look online, and we do have links in the description, um, you'll probably find it a lot cheaper than that. But uh, let's have a look a bit closer at the box. As we've said, you can see there it looks quite colourful. You've got a picture of this uh, dragon on the front there. Uh, you've got a picture of the SSD. It tells you the specifications. Uh, the side does go into a little bit more information about which windows it supports, which is generally Windows 7 and above. Um, not that you should be using 7 anymore, uh, but anyway. Uh, and all your other bits on there about it having 3D, TLC, NAND flash, uh, the five year warranty, and so forth. Uh, on the back gives you a bit more di uh, information for your different languages and so forth uh, as well. And on this side, there isn't much there at all. Um, bear in mind, this does come with um, software you can download, so you can flash it, and you can transfer data and stuff like that. Uh, the links will be in the description for that as well. But basically, the C tools, which generally you can use on most uh, Seagate products, um, basically allows you to check the drive health and the performance and do all the software firmware updates as well. Let's have a closer look at the SSD. Okay, so this is everything you've got in the box. So you basically got the SSD itself uh, and you've also got a Seagate limited warranty and it's got all your different languages all the way from uh, English to Turkey and so forth. It's all listed on there. Uh, so you need to know about the warranty it's all there but it does come with a five-year warranty so let's have a closer look at this so as you can see there you've got the SSD uh, if you know there is no heat sink on here which in a way has its advantages um, because one if it doesn't need one or it doesn't come with one that means it traditionally doesn't get as hot as possibly some of the others on the market but on top of that you can fit it straight into a laptop without worrying about having to take the heat sink off also if you've got a motherboard which has got built-in heat sinks um, to go over their m.2 sockets again you won't have to mess about with that um, so there's not much to really say rather uh, regarding that other than um, it's pretty straightforward. If you want a heatsink, you can always go out and buy one. Uh, but to, generally, you shouldn't need one. But we will do some tests with this in a few minutes to see how it performs with and without uh, a heatsink. Uh, it is double-sided, which means you've got memory and NAND on this side and, again, on the back. Hard to see it because you do have stickers on there. Uh, on the back, you have got all the uh, model number and all the specifications and everything like that um, so that's good there and um, one thing I would suggest though and we've done testing this in the past is if you are um, testing this um, sorry if you're going to be using this in your computer and you are going to be putting a heat sink on there um, we usually recommend you take this bit off um, it allows a better heat transfer between the uh, basically the memory and the heat sink itself 
but saying that just bear in mind on some manufacturers will void your warranty if you did do that so just bear that in mind I'd hate you to do that and then find that it don't work and you try and send it back and they say oh no you ain't got a sticker on for whatever reason uh, stickers can sometimes void warranties uh, I might be wrong on this one but just double check um, but if you're happy and you want the best performance generally taking the stickers off we have found can drop the temperatures uh, a fraction maybe only a couple of degrees but every little helps if you are trying to cool it to its best potential Okay, so now we've got the testing. We are pitting it up against mainly the Cerberum 1TB rocket, so it's the same physical size. You can see the read speed on the left column and the write speed on the right columns. The read speed on the on both of them is roughly around about the same, but when you say maximum, but when you get to more uh, consistency down the line, the Firecuda is a lot faster. And if you look at the write speeds, it's actually running over four times faster than the Cerberant, even though the Cerberant should be, in theory, on paper, running at roughly the same speed. And that's using Crystal Disk Mark, and you can see a bit more information there, pairing the two against other SSDs on the market, which obviously are slower generations. For example, the Kingston is a SATA-based M.2, and the other ones are Gen free m.2 is not gen 4 but it gives you a rough idea uh, the speed difference on these and again you can see that huge difference between the fire cuda and the cerberum there's just uh, no comparison in reality which seems a little strange because on paperwork it does say it can go a lot higher again it could be just a bug in crystal disc mark but then again we'd look again using atto and even though the max speeds of both are quite similar, especially on the read, the right is a little bit around, a uh, little bit out. But you'll see where the Fire Cuda is more consistent on its results. It's past 256k. Where if you look at the Cerberus, they seem to be all over the place. So while the max speed is close, it isn't as consistent. So on a lot of the times, if you do look at this test, and this is what a lot of manufacturers do, they put the results of this test down, you'll see in the max speed, but it's not actually managing to stay at that speed for long, in all honesty, uh, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, but again, the Seagate just basically, uh, well, wins the day, basically. It uh, goes straight through there and carries on getting that high result constantly. And again, it beats it pretty much hands down on every single test. Uh, in a second, you're going to see the actual file speed differences where we're copying uh, from basically a raided uh, drive onto both of the drives. First, we'll copy onto the Fire Cuda, as you can see here. And you can see its copying speed starts off at over 2 gigabytes per second. It does slow down a bit, but it stays pretty constant all the way through and doesn't take long. And this is a 28 gig file with 203 items in there. It's basically got videos, pictures, and Adobe Premiere Pro files in there. Now, we do the same um, test on the Cerberus. Again, it starts off very similar. And then suddenly it's like, uh oh, and basically, well, it goes to a crawl, but it's going a hell of a lot slower than it should be, or at least in comparison to the Fire Cuda. There's, as you can see, it's taken a lot longer to copy exactly the same information, which again, on paperwork, it should be pretty much the same, but in reality, it is not. Next we're going to go on to the temperature testing so you'll be able to see the temperature differences. We did a test on the Fire Cuda uh, with the temperature with a heat sink on and without because it doesn't come with one. Uh, and as on, you can see on there, the bottom test is the Fire Cuda with the heat sink. It does come in uh, a lot cooler than if it hasn't got a heat sink, but saying that, it's still a lot cooler than the Cerberus, which doesn't come with a heat sink either. The Seagate drive does come with some tools which you can download, including C tools and Disk Wizard. C tools is basically for recovery, disk checking, and stuff like that. Disk Wizard is basically there for doing stuff like uh, cloning and formatting and so forth, and obviously doing petitions. 
disk wizard is pretty simple you can partition you can make recovery media you can clone a disk the clone in the disk bit is actually a cronus it's just branded um seagate clone disk but it is actually a cronus uh, and you've got a few other options on there some things are locked on there like the secure zone and universal uh, restore you have to basically have a try or decide uh, it or purchase it obviously you are also able to update the firmware if there is an update as well and seagate does offer it's like a backdoor protection for security you can actually read more about that online i'm not going to go full in details but supposedly it is very secure compared to probably some of the other ssds what are on the market and obviously the advantage is if they are updating firmware all the time then obviously you're always going to get the latest security if available due to the consistency of the drive as in it constantly worked at the speeds it should have unlike the Cerberant one which sort of peaked at levels it should get to and then dropped dramatically uh, we are given this Seagate Firecuda 520 hour hell yeah award